Today we have two terrifying stories of teenage life. First off, a group of teenage vigilantes try to stop a crime but end up becoming part of one. And then we travel back to the year 1988, where a slumber party turns in to a horror movie when four girls are visited from beyond the stars. Today on Dead Rabbit Radio. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host, Jason Carpenter. I'm having a great day. I hope you guys are having a great day too. This one actually I'm recording really late. So I apologize for that for the people who listen to it day of. It's just been a weird day. I think something's kind of going around the city of Hood River. Everyone's getting kind of sick. And I'm not technically saying I'm sick, but I'm feeling a little lazy today. A little bit lazy today. So let's go ahead and get this episode started. We are headed off to the city of Vista, California. Hop in the Jason Jalopy. We're going to go for a ride. It's October 2019. And there's a guy named Robert Dreyfus. Allegedly, I'm sure there is actually a guy named Robert Dreyfus, but this particular Robert Dreyfus uh, will allegedly be involved in these acts. There's a guy named Roger Dreyfus. Tick, 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 tick. He's not an actual tick. That's not a noise he makes when his claws, his little legs are hitting the ground. That's him typing on a keyboard. Ooh, baby. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Mm, Yeah, I can't wait to be all perverted with you. And who he's talking with is not just a normal shopkeeper. He's not not going into 7-Eleven. He's like, yeah, I'd like a couple Slim Jims, a lottery ticket, and mm, can't wait to be perverted with you. And they're like, what? No, what he's talking to uh, underage girls online. Again, not it's not his mandibles that are clicking together that's making that noise. He is a human being. He's just typing very, very loudly. So now let's jump to the other side of this conversation here. We're we're watching this little tick. <laughs> we're watching this little insectoid man tick, 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 typing away. We now teleport to who he's typing to. And you're like, Jason, Jason, no, no, no. I don't want to teleport into the room of a 12-year-old girl talking to a sexual predator. And I'm like, but we're not. We're actually teleporting into the room of a 16-year-old girl talking to a predator. And she's part of a group of vigilantes that they go online pretending to be younger girls and then get these guys to show up in person and they can videotape them and say ha you've broken the law evildoer we're gonna send this to the police now there's actually a big community on youtube that does it i don't know if these girls were doing this for youtube but they definitely were doing this now the girl who's currently posing as an even younger girl turns around and goes let's get them girls let's suit up and they're like putting on their armor Actually, they're just putting on their jackets. And they've arranged a date with this guy. October 6th, 2019. We're ready to go, girls. Let's hop in the... Uh, uh, let's just hop in our dad's Tesla. Driving down the road. I get, I get, that's a copyrighted theme song. Can't do that. That is the theme song for the pervert busters. They have a siren on their car. It's a... Wow, 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 driving through the city. And so they arraigned... This is all true, but... Okay, that's not true. They weren't... They didn't have... I don't know if their dad owned a Tesla. They don't have an alarm on their car, but... A group of girls were going to start busting these perverts. It start being the operative word, because as far as I can tell, this is their first and most likely last time they've tried doing this. So they talked to this guy... Half man, half insect, Robert Dreyfus. They arrange a meetup for October 6, 2019, two days after my birthday. So I was just chilling. Two days while this story was taking place, I was, I don't know. I was two days older. No, I was more than two days older. It doesn't matter. The point is, is that my birthday is October 4th. Remember that? Send me presents. October 6, 2019. The sting is ready. The girl standing on the street corner, dolled up. And the dude's driving, Robert Dreyfus is driving in his car. He has, yes, delicious sugar, sugar in the woman. I see the sugar. It looks so sweet. He's driving down the road. Apparently now he's the bug monster from Men in Black. He sees this young girl on the side of the road. He pulls up. Get in. Get into my car. He puts on his human voice now. Get into my car. And again, this is a whole thing where the girls are going to be like, ha ha, you're a pervert. And we're going to turn you into the police. But the guy pulls up, and the girl's standing there, and he goes, get in the car. And she goes, no, 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 you get out of the car. And he's like, no, 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 get in the car. Now, I'm not going to say teenagers are stupid. In a battle of wit, there's a reason why we use words like predator and prey. The reason why those words kind of matter is in a battle of the wits, generally someone who has been in this situation before, allegedly, 
will be better equipped for throwing curveballs and for being able to roll with the punches. And prey generally gets eaten. They don't get to learn from their mistakes, right? So this dude is trying to sweet talk. Mm, sugar, sugar, get in the car, sugar. And she is like, no, no, no. And eventually, so her friends are like hiding behind the corner, right? With cameras ready. And they see their friend standing out and the car pulls up and the guy's like talking to her. And she's like, talking there. What, what's Susie saying? I don't know. Shh. I don't know what Susie's saying. Apparently, they're all 50s housewives. Um, Lucille Ball is behind the corner eating a bunch of chocolate. And and they see their friend talking. And come on, Ethel. And then they see their friend like still talking to this guy. And the guy beckoning her to get in the car. And they're like, don't do it. Don't do it. And she gets in the car. And the car drives away. Now, at this point, all the, all the friends are kind of staring at each other. They all got their cameras ready. And they're like, uh, that's, that's... That's, that's not what, that's not what was supposed to happen, right? I never saw that in the YouTube video. So the girl is now captive of this guy. Now she pulls out her cell phone and she starts texting her friends, uh, hey guys, hey guys, you won't believe what happened, but I, you know that guy I've been talking to who's a known sexual predator, allegedly, she's typing out allegedly. Yeah, I'm in his car now. Remember that whole sting thing where we were gonna like bust this dude? Yeah, I got in his car. Hell, help, help. Little emoji, little screaming emoji. And the girls call the police. Now, luckily, they were standing right next to the car. They, well, they knew who the guy was. They knew his real name. They could get his license plate number and all that stuff. So very, very shortly after all this happened, cops driving on the road, a real police officer, not a vigilante, not driving his dad's Tesla. He's driving down the road. APB comes in for, you know, it used to be APB, which is all points bulletin. Now it's Bolo. Be on the lookout for and maybe they mean two different things now, but... And so anyways, the cop's driving on the road, and he sees his car drive by, and he's like, hmm, that's interesting. We're supposed to have a be on the lookout for a vehicle match in the description. Plus, I'm also very, very concerned about the antennae <laughs> bulging out of that man's head. <laughs> Pulls him over. Young girl in passenger seat. Oh, no, 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 officer. She was in the car when I bought it. I don't know this girl. She's just, like, she just lives in this car. He gets arrested, and he's charged with kidnapping, sending harmful material to a minor, and communication with a minor for specific offenses. And that's an actual law that you can break. And the cops basically were like, in a nudge, they have to release these things every once in a while in the news. Don't be, a, don't be a crime fighter. Don't be a vigilante. If you want to help, join the police. Or, well, don't do that. I mean, there's other ways you can help. Raise money. For him, I guess. Like, I don't know if you can hold. A, I don't know if you can hold a bake sale for the police, but basically, don't do this. And definitely, if you are going to do this, don't, don't, don't climb into their car, because really, at the end of the day, it could have ended a lot worse, right? I guess that goes without saying. So, we don't know. It's this guy's probably going to go to jail. He was caught. Red. What are what's an insect's legs called? He was caught red that. And he's currently doing time in a Roach Hotel. And then, now this doesn't even make sense, but I'm just going to roll with it. It's going to be a long episode. Just imagine Robert Dreyfus now sitting in a colony full of the worst bugs ever. That doesn't, that makes even less sense. Who are the worst bugs ever? Like, is it just one of each species or is there actual named bugs? Bugs Bunny, <laughs> maybe. Okay, we're done with the bug jokes. Don't be a bug. Don't be an insect. It's moral number one. Don't be an insectoid human. Two. If you're going to be a vigilante, don't get into. There's never a part where Batman's like, "I have to defeat Joker," but first I must get in his vehicle and let him drive me away. And then the last more. What was the first one? Oh yeah, don't be a bug. And the second one was, oh, don't climb into people's cars. I think the biggest moral of the story is. So, yes, yes, moral of the story, I think those are it. Don't be a bug. Don't climb into people's cars. Don't climb into people's cars if they're bugs is a good combination of those two. And then, girls, be careful of bug people. The, let's go ahead and move on to our next. Let's let's repair the train wreck that was the... I like that story. Kind of went off the rails in the ending with the bug, the bug motel, worst bugs ever. Bugs sitting in cells, lifting weights. A cockroach guy your time's up and it's like dead roach walking and the the roach is like walking down the the ramp 
and then they have to put him in like a big old electric chair. And he's like, what? what? Okay. okay. <laughs> you know what the worst part is? The worst part is, one, I'm leaving that in. I'm not going to edit that out. Two, I as I was saying it, I perfectly imagined it. Like I imagined the grimy walls of the bug prison. The giant cockroach walking down, and then the guards were also bugs for some reason. Like, in my head, it wasn't like humans. But the cockroach was walking like a regular cockroach, but the guards had on, like, guard uniforms, and they were standing up and walking on two legs. Anyways, the theater of the mind, people. I wonder if you imagined it the same way I did. Other bugs looking out the cells as the cockroach is walking to his... Can you electrocute a cockroach? I'm sure you can. Okay, <laughs> that segment is over. Let's go ahead and move on to our next story. Our next story is from our 1988 file. Now, our 1988 file is a collection of UFO encounters that I found from 1988. It's all from this website called thinkaboutitdocs.com. Show notes, though it'll be in the show notes. It's a really cool collection of stuff. Now, I'm actually have already moved on to 1987's UFO files, but I still have a ton of stuff from 1988, and I kind of put these in as short little things that I can read off to you that are cr- pretty creepy. It's hard to verify, so it's mostly just the story as it stands. So let's take a look at one of these. It's June 24th, 1988. Bing! We're out of Vista, California. We're now in Redmond, Washington. It's 2 a.m. And we are now teenage girls. You're like, Jason, Jason, come on, man. You you just did a story about a pervert trying to entice young girls on the internet. And now we're at a slumber party. And not only that, we're teenage girls. And I'm like, bro, just roll with it, okay? Sorry, the folly of youth. That's the theme of this episode. It's stuff that happens to kids. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You didn't really, you could have explained that in the intro. No, 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 no. As, as we're having this conversation, I'm doing my ponytail. I'm like, how does it look? No, 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 not ponytail. I want pigtails. I want like the little, what's those things? Not pigtails. I want the ones that like, it's like two ponytails sticking out of the side of my head. Right? I want those. You're like, Jason, this is oddly detailed for your slumber party fantasy. I'm like, oh, you. So we walk into the screen. <laughs> We walk into this teenage girl slumber party. But we're girls, so it's less creepy, right? I guess... Okay, we're not going to... We're not going to think about the implications of this all. We are now at a a girl's slumber party. Okay. So, let's take a look at this. On June 24th, 1988, four girls are having a slumber party. And one of them lost their puppy. <laughs> That's the noise I'm making, because I'm sad when puppies are losing, but they can also, out in the darkness here, they can hear their lost puppy outside. Oh no, where's where's her puppy? It's lost. And their faces are pressed against the window, and we're like looking out into the darkness too. You're like, Jason, quit making that noise. I'm like, sorry, it's sad. And we don't see a puppy out in the spacious backyard. But what we see off in the distance... Is a hovering, disc-shaped craft. Me and you look at each other, and we're like, oh, this is what we're here for. Like, yeah, sure, missing puppies are sad and all, but this is a Dead Rabbit Radio episode. But the So we, we're expecting something weird, right? But the girls aren't. They, they just want to have a slumber party and read books and talk about boys. And instead, they're seeing this vehicle. It had white and red lights, and you could see a little faint green light. And we see it descend down, so now it's lower than the tree line. Oh, there was a forest back there, by the way. So was there weren't there's not it's Redmond, Washington, so there's trees everywhere. So looking out into this dark forest, we see this UFO disappear behind the tree line. Now, later in the evening. We're all in the house together, right? Party time! Dun, 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 dun. That was a hit song in 1988. Actually, no, it would have been 1988. would have been like, Straight up now, tell me, do you really want to love? And we're listening to some Paul Abdul. And I'm great. I'm changing my hairstyle. And you're super irritated in your corner. You're like, dude, that better not have been it. We better not be at this slumber party for that. 
yes, UFO sighting is cool, but come on, man. And I was sitting there dancing, <laughs> singing into a comb, singing, not in a comb, singing into a hairbrush. Straight up now, tell me, dude. You're like, oh my God. I'm like, no, no, no. You can be MC Scat Cat, and I'm giving you a hairbrush. You're like, dude, tell me there's something else, or I'm leaving. I'm leaving the slumber party. And I'm like, don't worry, there'll be something else. But first, we got to sing a duet. And as we're singing, um, Boys to Men, Mariah Carey's One Sweet Day, two of the other girls leave the party. <laughs> They're like, oh man, that singing's terrible. Two of the girls leave the slumber party. And they're walking through the house looking for something to eat. Hmm. I wonder if there's some food in the fridge and these two girls are walking. Now, the way the house is laid out is, I don't know actually, but the way the story, but according to my notes, the way that it works is that where the girls are at, there's a staircase leading up to the kitchen. So I'm assuming the slumber party is in the basement, right? And these girls are walking through the, the house and they see the staircase leading up to the kitchen. And they they see the open door. They see the kitchen. And they're like, oh, yes. Beyond that door is nourishment for our little tummies. And they go to walk up the stairs. And a figure stands in front of the door at the top of the stairs. A shadow staring down at them. And the girls take off running. At this point, it's like 3 in the morning. The girls take off running. And the girls run in, and they shut off our song in the middle of it, and you're like, oh, sweet relief. And the girls are, like, crying, they're freaking out, and they go, there's someone in the house. There's somebody in the house, they're in the kitchen. Now, of course, there's adults in the house, but they could just tell from the silhouette of the shadow, this wasn't an occupant. You know how you have that feeling in your pit of the stomach that something's wrong? That's what these girls felt. Now, the girls are panicked. The adults in the house are upstairs past the shadow so the girls jump in their sleeping bags i brought a sleeping bag you didn't so we're gonna get into the same sleeping bag zip it up and cover it up over our heads (laughs) the room is silent all of these girls hiding in their sleeping bags the ultimate defense something that children do when they're scared of the boogeyman a monster under their bed cover themselves with a blanket The room is quiet. The air is still. And then one of the girls pulls her sleeping bag away from her face and sees in front of her, staring right at her, a green humanoid with pointy ears, bushy eyebrows, and red glowing eyes. She gasps, and it makes every other girl in the room react. And according to this report, when they removed the sleeping bag as well, they saw that face. Each girl saw that face staring at them. You have four girls all peeking out of their sleeping bag, each seeing a green-skinned, red-eyed face staring directly at them. The figure disappears from view. And then, from where they're at, they can see the stairway leading up to the kitchen. And they can see lights. <laughs> Multicolored lights flashing in the darkness of the kitchen. True story? Who knows? It was reported by something called the UFO Information Service. And then eventually reported on thinkaboutitdocs.com. Now, we've covered them a couple times. A lot of their stuff does wash out. Again, not saying the story is true. But none of the stories I've come across so far seems like it was made up by this website. They do actually seem to collate a lot of existing reports. I think it's obviously the idea of a bunch of kids having a slumber party is it's such a a symbol of childhood innocence and you're near your parents but also separated from them. That element of it is creepy. An object or a creature standing in between you and adult help is creepy. The idea of... Everyone's seeing the same thing. Again, according to the the way that they word this, it makes it seem like each person sees the face from where they're sitting or where they're laying. But that idea doesn't mean there was four of them, doesn't mean that this creature actually, no matter where you were at, was right in front of you. There was only one creature because there was only one shadow, but no matter where you were at, it was right in front of you. So you have an idea of like interdimensional, perception-altering things. 
And then you always have to think of they were hiding, they looked, they saw the face, it disappeared. Is there any sort of lost time? This story's taking place at 3 in the morning. It's really easy to lose time late at night. When you're driving down the road and you're supposed to be at home by 5, and the next thing you know it's 7, and you're down some dirt road, you can be like, whoa, I lost time. If you go to bed at 10 p.m., and you wake up at 6 a.m., you could have been abducted at any point during your sleep. You would never notice the time was lost. So were these girls, did anything else happen to these girls? Were they abducted? Was it all a made-up story, and these four girls thought it would be really funny to tell this story? Who knows? But it's creepy nonetheless. The next time you get invited to a slumber party, you may want to think, hmm, I don't think that's a great idea. So when you go to bed tonight, think of this. You won't really know what happens to you while you're sleeping. Because it's possible that this vehicle knew those four girls were going to be in that house, secluded at that time, but didn't think they were going to be awake. And as that vehicle descended into the forest, and its occupant from another time, another place, another world, Marched silently through the dark woods towards that house. Slipped into it without a key, without turning a lock. Stood at the top of the stairs and saw two young girls frightened at the bottom. That's when the entity would have thought, they're awake. But I still have a mission. And then it slowly walked down the stairs to find four sleeping bags zipped shut, young girls terrified inside. But this creature had come from a long ways away. Nothing would stop it now. The girls would just have a memory of a face in front of them, a disappearance and some multicolored lights emanating from a dark kitchen. But the alien shadow would remember more, would remember it all. What will you remember when you wake up tomorrow morning? Will you remember nothing? Will you be one of the few that remembers everything? The experiments, the terror, the isolation, the powerlessness? Or will you just meet them in the middle? And all you will remember is a glimpse of waking up in the middle of the night to a green face and red glowing eyes staring right at you. DeadRabbitRadio at gmail.com is going to be our email address. You can also hit us up at facebook.com slash deadrabbitradio. Twitter is at deadrabbitradio. Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. Have a great one, guys. Bye.